And I'm on topic. I saw this just the other, just this morning, actually, on the techno subreddit. I know I speak about this subreddit all the time, but please forgive me because it's one of the best subreddits out there. Techno subreddit on te on Reddit. Check it out. Um, somebody actually made a good uh, analysis that I wasn't aware of, but supposedly it's been six months since a uh, resident advisor closed their comment section. And if you know anything about me and you've seen videos I've spoken about, I was really upset when they did so. Um, again, RA comment section for me has been my kind of like um, education into electronic music. That was where I kind of, again, some people have argued against it to me on the comments especially, but um, I don't know about you, but when I first got involved into electronic music, Everest Advisor was my first place, was sort of my home base. And it has been for the most part. I think when you get involved in a scene, usually the first couple of websites you check out, the first magazines, the first couple of bands, usually stick with them, right? Like Block Party. That was maybe the first band I kind of got into indie-wise because, you know, they had a black frontman, right? Simple as that. I was like, wow, I didn't know anyone else. I didn't know there was a any other black dudes that listen to this kind of music, right? It's like Lightspeed Champion, um, also known as uh, Black Orange. I'm a big fan of his because he was basically one of the only black guys I saw on TV that was doing it. Um, it's like... Um Loads of other ones. Um, maybe there's loads of other ones. Anyway, the first experience always ones that you kind of hold dear. So when I first kind of stumbled into electronic music, the first thing I kind of saw was Resident Advisor. They were my first experience into it, and of course the website is you know pretty well done. They have an amazing magazine with great features and great articles written by some really talented writers and on their team. Some of them freelancers. They have listing of events of some of the best events out, especially on major cities. You can search via the country, via the city you're in, and we can find the best events. And because it's an industry standard, most of most of, if not all, the events that you need to know about are going to be on Resident Advisor. There was a time when some of them were on Facebook where people were like hiding their events, whatever. But for the most part, if if you're able to go and it's open to the public, you'll find out through R R A. Regardless, they'll put it up on there. Even if it's open to the public, and have like an email you can send in your RSVP list. Uh, they have a list of all the great festivals for you to check out too. Um, photos of club events. Uh, music from artists and stuff to check out as well. The DJ charts, which I used to check a lot when I was first getting into DJing, but then you know, as soon as you get, as soon as you get a bit of practice under your belt and you start to develop your own voice in DJing or your your own sound, the last thing you want to do is go by go via what other DJs are playing in their charts. You might you might just sound something in the nightclub when you're DJ, when you're out dancing that might oh shit I I want to play it. Yeah, that's what I do. If I'm out in a rave and I hear a DJ that I like. I might Shazam a song because it fits into what I want to play. Like, oh, wow, I need this in my collection. But I'm not Shazamming his whole set because I want to play what they want to play. It's not, there's, there's no real point in that sort of thing. Uh, of course, the mixes and the podcasts are really entertaining too for a lot of people. And it's in general just a great website. But unfortunately, they took away the comment section, right, six months ago. And I think it had a lot to do with Mama Shake. Um, she was an, she's an artist, uh a well-known DJ actually. She had a really good uh, deck mantle set that I checked out quite recently. Actually, I'm, I'm not. I didn't really hear. I, I hadn't really heard of her prior to deck mantle set. Then obviously I heard about her a lot since uh, she kind of came onto Resident Advisor the mix series. But I remember Mama Shake did this um, interview on Resident Advisor, right? That was really weird, and I think that was kind of the beginning and the end to the whole like comment section. I think by then it already kind of went a bit awry and got a bit crazy, and people were saying some wild shit on there anyway in general. Um, but I think in general, when this interview dropped is when the comment section kind of got obliterated and the people from RA were probably shook or they kind of got some pressure from the labels or managers or just in general as a team, they probably thought, you know what, this is not this is getting a bit uncontrollable. Um, the only issue I have with it is that RA do have qu a, quite a good uh, comment moderation um, way of dealing with kind of spam or troll comments, which I'm not really adverse to say everything is troll because sometimes people just feel the way they feel. If it's not what you feel, if you, if, if you don't, it's kind of similar to the Carlos Mazarin, ben, Stephen Crowder situation at the moment. Just because someone doesn't agree with what you say and they kind of mock you for it doesn't mean they're a troll. They just might just because internet language is quite trolly in a sense anyway. That's what gets the attention, right? That's what people click on. That's what gives people lows. Um, if you look at some web meme pages on the internet that have those comment creep things and they kind of collate funny replies back and forth. Some of the most cutty, snarky things that work best on Twitter work best on Instagram comments are what get featured, right? It's kind of the nature of the language of the internet. It might develop and evolve over time, but in general, it is the way it is, right? So, but they have a really good way of dealing with it because they kind of copied the Reddit kind of upvote and downvote section, right? Where if your comment is necessarily not really received well by the community, they'll just downvote it into oblivion so you can't see it. 
So sometimes it gets downvoted to a point where the comment gets deleted. Sometimes it gets downvoted to a point where it's hidden. You have to click it to kind of check it out yourself. So you have, and again, it's up to you as a as an adult to kind of decide: do you want to click it and see this? You know, probably derogatory, mostly negative comment about yourself or about an artist you manage or about someone you're a fan of, or do you want to keep it moving? But I think this kind of um, interview with Mama Shake really kind of set the cat amongst the pigeons. Um, again, I think it was mostly her fault. Mama Snake, sorry, Mama Shake. Who's going to Mama Shake? Mama Snake um, and her RA podcast, RA number 655. This really set the cat amongst the pigeons because, again, I think it was really her fault. She came into the interview with a real agenda. I'm not sure if she woke up on the wrong side of the bed or she just had a, a bad experience just after she recorded the mix. But she just went into full SJW mode and kind of ruined the base, the the enjoyment of this mix in general. And she's a good, she's a great DJ, really talented. But again, just his whole agenda driven thing kind of really put a bad sour taste in the mouth. Um, again, you can check out the interview yourself. I don't need to go through it, but again, just read it yourself and you can see what I mean. And I think some of the comments that are still left there kind of illustrate a lot to it now. Um, some of the most upvoted ones, I don't think, I think they took away the votes, whatever that on there. But again, just to, you can check out yourself. But this comment, this thread on, the second subreddit said it's been six months since it closed and the question was the following and i think it's um uh, and the, the person writes i think it's been a shame i just don't uh i just don't eat their message um that the comment section was spawned with disrespectful for comments obviously there are some reasons involved the comment section brought much insight about clubs past and events and new releases so enough complaining and fast forward to my question does anyone know if the ra community moved on to other online places with the event added and the lively comment section facebook for example has a lot of events but never managed to produce a substance comment section which is very true right you only have to go on you know if you go if you go on a big event on an r the problem was right if you go to a big event on facebook like let's say for instance an event at print works most of the comments i know are just going to be about people selling tickets i've got two tickets i've got four tickets i've got two tickets like it's just insane the amount of tickets people resell for electronic events it's just like fucking nutty right Okay, so maybe there's a and the resale market and electronic tickets events. There's not even that high. How much money are you gonna get? I don't understand how people do it anyway, regardless. But so the comment section is a bit null and void in that res, in that respect, unless sometimes the event host kind of only locks the comments only they can reply, they can only post stuff, and then in the replies of their posts just be loads of things about ticket requests and shit. So it feels like some people have migrated across to like YouTube channels, like Circle, like Circal, Circal. I don't even pronounce it. Circle. I don't, is it French? Uh, the French channel that does those amazing uh, live DJ sets in some really picturesque um, locations all around Europe. They do some great stuff. Obviously, Boiler Room. There's obviously Mix Mag. Um, there's BRTV. There's a few other Italian ones that do some stuff as well. Then of course there's Facebook. But again, I don't. I don't. I'm not sure about you, but I've never read a Facebook comment in my life. I don't really go through them. They're, they're you know, it's a cesspool of degenerates for the most part. That's probably the worst place to go comment. And I do remember when RA closed their comment section. This something along the lines. This is something along the lines of look, they're going to close their comment section, but the comments on the other page are still open, so you still continue your conversation. It's like, but no, those those are the worst places to continue your conversations. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Like people don't talk like this. That's not where your actual core fan base is going to be. The diehards are going to be on your websites. Most fly by night fans or the ones who just want to get a rise or get a rise out of certain DJs. They're gonna they're gonna be the ones that are spamming your Instagram and your Twitter and your Facebooks. All the hardcore fans are going to be on your on your website. So you're gonna have to put up with a couple of degenerates here and there. But for the most part, I think it worked out really well. And then um, a thing that I kind of thought which really hurt my experience of Resident Advisor was that when I first got into electronic music again, um, I think the London scene, because I just, I, I'd, I'd come from the kind of hipster Dawson scene, right? So where I was going out to all those kind of cool bars like the Alibi, Birthdays and whatever other bars are out there during that kind of time kind of circulating around that kind of strip. Once you make that jump, there's not many people that you kind of take from that scene to the electronic scene, right? That's when I used to go to the I forgot the car park um, near Shoreditch where they used to do loads of events there. Um, you don't really take many people from that scene to that scene, right? They usually just stay there. And most of my friends that were from that scene in the hipster crew are still there, right? They're still DJing in small bars in and around Dawson, Hackney Wick, Hackney Downs. They're still going into the same kind of festivals and the same kind of vein. They'd rather go to like a um, what's that called? What's that one called? Boundary something? What's it called? That one I saw recently. They'd rather go to like a... What's that festival? They'd rather go to a... What's that boundary one called? Is it boundary something? Anyway, they won't go to like the obvious festivals that we go to in electronic music events, but they'll go to the ones that kind of are a bit more focused into the kind of things that they're into. So... 
I had to cultivate a whole new group of people that I, I would hang around with and go out with for nights out, which again was very difficult to do. And I so the easiest thing for me to do was to go and resonate via the comment section and check out the events that people were really hyping up and speaking well about because that was one thing that I really liked about the comment section. When people hated something, they went in hard with the hate, which again for the resonate advisor mods, for the people that were putting on the events, probably a bad experience. But for us as fans, we got to see if someone really likes something, they're gonna go hard for it and, and make you know about it. Or they'll do that thing about trying to dumb it down, trying to make it seem not a big deal so they don't want the dregs to come along. But that was the only way I could uh, uh, summarize or s summarize where I should go, right? By reading the comment section. Because someone might say, oh, don't go here because these people, they have posts, they don't invest in their sound system. They have overzealous security, blah, blah, blah. Or go here because they have great door policy. The music is really good. They don't release a lineup, but the DJs are always banging. Like you could just, you know, kind of figure out where to go. And as soon as you figured out where to go, you then kind of stuck by those parties and kept following them around. Like it was just a really good way to kind of get your education. And then of course, you always get some gems there but if they did a long if they did a massive feature on like dixon for instance right you'd get a couple of gems there about maybe i don't know some sh some sandwich shop he might have opened i might i think i might have been in the feature but imagine just little nuggets of information you won't have known prior right who he grew up with um some baby production production friends that he grew up with that you weren't familiar with that have the similar sort of sound and you then have another dj to follow who you're a fan of then you start buying their releases it was just a real good way to discover loads of different things it kind of gave you little threads of information that you could then go and research yourself right but um again over the last six months that hasn't happened and for the most part it's just turned into like a glorified events listing page for me right i, I don't really read their features apart from the um the DJ one, what's the one that I, I like? There's a one that I like on it that's that's awesome. That I listen to with D Dr. Rubenstein. Uh, ba, 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 ba. The one, the feature I like is yeah, the art of DJ. That's probably the best feature they have on there. So I, I'll read those from the top to bottom because again, being an aspiring DJ myself or a hobby DJ, it's good to kind of get an, an understanding of what these girls and guys at the highest level are doing, how they approach stuff, their mindset, the way they, you know, how serious they take the art of DJing. It's a really good feature. It's very DJ heavy, of course. It gets into the minutia of how they prep and, and put their and put their playlists together and mix it. It's just really cool. It's amazing. One of the best ones. The Jeff Mills one just happened, I think, a couple of features back was probably one of the best ones hands down we recommend you check that out but apart from that i don't really check out anything on their side i don't really read it anymore i just check it it's just an, a glorified event section for me but again this would have been far better this feature on ruben's side would have been far better if the comments option because then we'd know we'd find out some trinkets about her uh, uh, the scene she grew up what kind of club match she was playing for at the beginning in the berlin scene you have somebody from the berlin scene who'd pipe in and say oh yeah i saw her playing at a gallery once when she first started and i can't believe how far she's gotten it's just a really cool way to see stuff and again think for the artist too it's a good rep representative uh representation of who your fans are and what they sound like right i don't know it's something i don't know i found it really cool so for me personally i'm really sad that it's gone but again i'm not surprised because i've, I've got the feeling that r8 started taking itself too seriously um, which again has happened to stuff like websites like Pitchfork, Stereo Gum in the past. I don't know what it is about those sites. I think usually whenever the the four lead, the forerunner, the one at the front, the one that's kind of spearheading the movement, who's kind of dictating the voice and kind of adding some kind of journalistic editorial credibility to a scene, when they're the ones leading it, they inevitably get to a position where they start to get they start to kind of think their shit don't stink. It's just a happy thing happens all the time. Again, it's not to not a slight an RA. It happens all the time. I mentioned before, Pitchfork, Art, Stereo Gum, a few other indie sites I should check back in the day. They all went the same kind of route. They got really annoying at the end of it. They took themselves way too seriously. Um, and and they got to a point where, you know, some political favors were getting put into play. They wouldn't speak ill about certain labels or certain sponsors. There was some weird thing happening where it just didn't seem like it was a real thing that was happening. You know, it just seemed like a real situation. Like, you only have to look at the, the Nike, Peggy Goo situation to be like, you know, I don't know what was going on there. That was a bit strange. Um, some of the coverage of some of the DJs that they did, it's just a bit odd. So I guess they're at a point now where they're just too big. You know, they have they've got corporate sponsors. They have a lot of people kind of on their backs, probably putting pressure on them. So for us as a fans, it's it's a sad state of affairs. But I guess now we still have the techno subreddit, uh, like I mentioned previously, that's like kind of filled that void for me. So if you're out there and you're still kind of bemoaning the fact that um, the RA comments are closed, I really recommend you check this out. It's really one of my favorite uh, subreddits out there, techno subreddit on on the reddit i'll link in the show notes for you to check out but again um r.i.p the 
RA comment section. You will be long. You'll be missed, man. You'll be missed. It was a good. We had a great time. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was the best time of my life. Finding out all these new labels and finding out all these new releases and finding um, track IDs of things and features and other things I should look at. Just a really good section overall. So yeah, um, RIP.